Dr. Sage here. The next thing we're going to discuss in regards to the cell is the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is basically like the cell skeleton. So what does the cytoskeleton do? Essentially the same things that your skeleton does for you. Like your skeleton gives you your shape, like without my skeletal system I'd be a blob on the floor. And your skeleton allows you to have motion, like your muscles interacting with your skeletal system allows you to move. Well, the cytoskeleton does the same thing for cells. It gives the cell its shape, and it allows movement within cells and movement of entire cells. Now, with the cytoskeleton, there are three types of fibers that make up the cytoskeleton, called microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. Now, out of these three, microtubules is the largest type of fiber, microfilaments is the smallest type of fiber, and intermediate filaments is of intermediate size. It's a middle sized fiber. So we're going to go through these by one by one. The first one we're going to discuss is the microtubules. Microtubules are the largest type of fiber for the cytoskeleton. Okay, now you don't have to memorize these numbers around the screen. Just know that it's made up of the largest fiber. The other thing to note about microtubules is they are built out of a protein called tubulin. So, what do microtubules do? Well, one thing microtubules do is they give the cell its shape. Another thing microtubules do is they allow movement within the cells. For example, in a prior video lecture, I described how vesicles move from the rough ER to the Golgi apparatus. Okay, well, how do they get from the rough ER to the Golgi apparatus? They're not randomly wandering around until so just by chance they find the Golgi. They're actively moving from the rough ER to the Golgi. How does that happen? Well, a vesicle, okay, which is a membrane sphere with something inside it, for example, proteins, a vesicle attaches to what's called a motor protein. The motor protein has a head that attaches to the vesicle and then has feet that attach to a microtubule. And a motor protein does what its name sounds like it does. It has motion, it can move. So what happens is using energy, these feet walk along this microtubule. And as it does, it drags this vesicle along with it. And that's how the vesicle moves from the rough ER to the Golgi apparatus. So that's another example of things that microtubules do. What else do microtubules do inside your cells? Well, they're responsible for separating the chromosomes during cell division. In a later chapter, we're gonna go through the details of what happens during cell division. But as a preview, your chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell like this, chromosomes shown in red in this figure. And then the chromosomes that have this X shape you're thinking about, the reason they have an X shape is because that's actually two DNA double helixes attached to each other. What's going to happen is those two DNA double helixes are going to get pulled apart and they're going to move to two opposite sides of the cell. The reason is because this cell is going to split in the middle here to split into two separate cells. So half of the chromosomes need to go over here and half need to go over here. Okay, well the thing that's going to move those chromosomes is tubulin microtubules. Now, a little more details about it. There are things called centrosomes. So there's a little drawing over here on the right side of the video right now. This would be a centrosome over here. This would be a centrosome over here. The centrosomes are built out of a pair of centrioles. So this, this rod here is a centriole. This rod shaped up over, over here is a centriole. The two centrioles make a centrosome. Okay, now these centrioles, like you can see in this blown up image here, the centriole is built out of tubulin microtubules. Okay, and then tubulin microtubules grow from the centrosome and they're going to attach to the chromosomes. And then these tubulin microtubules end up pulling these chromosomes to two opposite sides of the cell. Now the details for how that happens, how that works, that's for a later lecture. Just for now, know that tubulin microtubules make up the centrioles, which makes up the centrosome, which is responsible for chromosome separation during cell division. What else can microtubules do? Microtubules are also inside cilia and flagella. Okay, cilia are these things that look like short little hairs. Okay, they're not hairs, they're called cilia. And the cilia, they can bend, they can move like this. Okay, and whenever they move like this, that's how this organism swims through the liquid it's living in, okay, by the bending of its cilia. 
or you can have just a long, what kind of looks like a long tail. It's not a tail, it's called a flagella. And that tail can spin kind of like a propeller and allow that organism to swim through the liquid it's living in. Okay, well inside cilia and inside flagella, there's tubular and microtubules. Those tubular and microtubules interacting with motor proteins allow the cilia to move and the flagella to move and allows these organisms to swim through the liquid they're living in. So those are the things that the tubular and microtubules can do. The next type of cytoskeleton is called actin microfilaments. Now the actin microfilaments are the smallest type of cytoskeleton. Again, don't worry about memorizing the numbers. It's the smallest type and it's also made out of a protein. This time the protein is called actin. Okay, so what can actin microfilaments do for your cell? Okay, well, one thing they do is they're inside your intestine. Okay, your intestine is basically like a long tube that stuff is gonna pass through, okay? But a little more realistically, your intestine wouldn't look like this. A little more realistically with my horrible drawing skills, okay, your intestine would uh, look like this, okay? Um, so what's happening is the plasma membrane of the cells lining the intestine, the plasma membrane is projecting inward, okay? Why? Because it increases the surface area. Like if you compare from left to right here, this form of an intestine versus this form of an intestine, this is a much larger surface area. So as things are passing through this intestine, there's a lot more places for stuff to get absorbed along the plasma membrane of the cells lining the intestine. Okay, that's a horrible drawing. A little bit better drawing is this one over here. So these microvilli, those are projections of the plasma membrane of the cells lining your intestine. Okay, or this electron microscope image of the actual microvilli. Inside these microvilli, okay, what you have is you have actin microfilaments. And those actin microfilaments are what give the microvilli their shape. So that's one thing actin microfilaments are used for. What else are they used for? They're also inside your muscle cells. So inside your muscle cells, you have actin microfilaments. So these kind of uh, yellow green fibers here. Uh, those are actin microfilaments. Then you also have myosin motor proteins, these purple things here. What happens? Well, the motor proteins, they want to walk. Okay, so these little heads on, or the feet on the motor proteins here, what they want to do is they want to walk this direction. Okay, these ones over here, they also want to walk. They want to walk this direction, but they're attached to each other. So although they're trying to go two opposite directions, they can't actually both move in two opposite directions because they're attached to each other. So they're trying to move, but they can't. So instead of them moving the two opposite directions since they're attached to each other, as they try to move, what happens instead is these actin microfilaments are pulled closer together. Okay, And as you can see in the example in the bottom half of this figure, when they're pulled closer together, that's what creates a muscle contraction. Okay, so that's another thing actin microfilaments are used for. They're used inside your muscle cells. What else is actin microfilaments used for? It also is used to create pseudopodia, which is a term that means false feet. So this organism here, this is an amoeba. This organism needs to be able to move, but it doesn't have legs to walk. So let's say it senses a piece of food over here and needs to go towards that food. What it will do is it'll line up its actin microfilaments in the direction it wants to crawl. And actin microfilaments can be made to grow longer or they can be made to short. What happens? It grows these actin microfilaments longer. Okay, so if we have actin microfilaments inside the plasma membrane of that cell, in this case the amoeba, as the actin microfilaments are growing longer, what it's gonna do is it's gonna push that plasma membrane out, creating this pseudopodia, this false foot. And that's how it crawls towards the thing it's trying, trying to get to. Okay, so that's another thing active microfilms are used for. What else are they used for? Another thing active microfilms are used for is they create cytoplasmic streaming. So what that means is the cytoplasm, the fluid inside a cell, is in motion. It's moving. Like in this image here, it kind of looks like the green blobs as a chloroplast. It looks like the chloroplasts are swimming. The chloroplasts aren't swimming. Instead, what happens is the cytoplasm is moving, and that movement causes the chloroplast to move around the cell. Okay, well, what creates that cytoplasmic streaming? It's again, actin microfilaments. 
Okay, so that's something else that actomic filaments are used for. The last type of cytoskeleton is called the intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments are of intermediate size. They're the middle-sized ones. Intermediate filaments are for more permanent structures. And for this course, that's all we're going to learn about intermediate filaments. They're in the middle-sized ones, and they're for more permanent structures. So that was a run-through of the cytoskeleton, which is a cell skeleton made up of tubule and microtubules, the largest type of fiber made out of tubule and proteins, used for things like chromosome separation during cell division. Actin microfilaments, the smallest type of fiber made out of the protein actin, is used for things like muscle contractions in muscle cells. Intermediate filaments of intermediate size and it's for more permanent structures. Everything we talked about so far, up until now in regards to the cell, has been stuff inside the cell. The organelles are inside the cell. The cytoskeleton is inside the cell. There are also things that cells make and they put outside of themselves. Those are called extracellular components. That's what we're going to talk about next. So in the next lecture, we'll talk about the extracellular components. So until then, this has been Dr. Sage.